Number 16. The London, Midland, and Scottish Railway Patriot Class The Patriots were a class of express passenger 10-wheelers built for the London, Midland, and Scottish Railway, with a total of 52 members built, with 42 of them built at Crewe and the other 10 at Derby, between November 1930 and May 1934. Their designer was Sir Henry Fowler, who was chief mechanical engineer for the Midland Railway starting in 1909, then later for the LMS following the Grouping Act in 1923, until being succeeded by Stanier in 1932. Fowler had the design for the Patriots based off of two other classes of 460 10-wheelers. Their chassis was based on that of Fowler's earlier Royal Scott class, and the boiler came from that of the former London and Northwestern Railway's large Clawtons. In fact, Fowler even had 12 of the large Clawtons rebuilt into Patriots. Since the Patriots were designed with the chassis from the Royal Scots and the boiler from the large Clawtons, these engines earned themselves a nickname Baby Scots. Numbering for the Patriots was a little mixed up at first, as those that were rebuilt from the large Clawtons still retained their original numbers, until they were soon renumbered in the straight 5500, the 5551, in 1934. Between 1946 and 1949, 18 of the Patriots had received a rebuild, making them look like more modern Stanier locomotives, with a new tapered boiler, cab, and tender, as well as sharing the same type of smoke deflectors as the Royal Scots, which had also received a Stanier-designed rebuild between 1943 and 1945. Throughout their working life on the LMS, then later the Midland region of British Railways after 1948, they mainly saw service on express passenger trains, but they also did a bit of work on goods trains from time to time as well. Withdrawal for the Patriots began in September 1960, and by December 1965, all of the Patriots were no more. Happily though, a replica of the final member of the class, number 5551, now officially named the Unknown Warrior, is currently being built by the LMS Patriot Project. Quite a bit of progress has been done on this engine since the project first started back in 2008, and at this point, it looks like the locomotive is just about near complete. It was expected to be completed and steamed sometime earlier. However, completion for this engine ended up being delayed due to the pandemic in 2020 so it's most likely to be completed either this year or next year in 2023. Number 15. The Milwaukee Road Streamline Hiawatha Class A Atlantics and Class F7 Hudsons. The Hiawatha of the Chicago, Milwaukee, St. Paul and Pacific Railroad, also more commonly known as the Milwaukee Road, is arguably one of the most famous streamlined passenger trains in U.S. railroad history. And what would such a fabulous train be without locomotives to match it? The Hiawatha first began service on May 29, 1935 with the Twin Cities Hiawatha, which ran between Chicago and the Twin Cities. This was also when the railroad introduced the streamlined Class A 442 Atlantics, created by Art Deco designer Otto Cooler and built by Alco. It were among the last 442 Atlantic-type steam locomotives in the United States, as well as the largest and most powerful. These engines were built in response to the Milwaukee Road's competition with the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy Railroad, otherwise known as the Burlington Route, with their Twin Cities Zephyr, and the Chicago and Northwestern Railway's Twin Cities 400. A total of just four Class A Atlantics were built, with the first one being built in May 1935, the next two a year later in 1936, and the final one in April 1937. They were recorded to reach up the speeds of more than 100 miles per hour, and there are even stories of these streamlined Atlantics attempting to try and beat the world speed record for steam locomotives. In fact, these engines did once hold the title for a short time. On May 15, 1935, about two weeks before the Hiawatha service first began, Class A No. 2 was tested out with a dynamometer car on a test run between Milwaukee and New Lisbon, Wisconsin. Over a 14-mile stretch of track, the engine was recorded to reach up to a top speed of 112.5 miles per hour. This was the fastest speed to be achieved by a steam locomotive around that time, and this had turned Class A No. 2 into an instant record holder, as well as the very first steam locomotive to officially reach up to more than 110 miles per hour. 
At that time, the Milwaukee Road Class A Atlantics held the title for the fastest steam locomotives in the world until LNER Gresley Class A 4 Pacific No. 4468, Mallard, rightfully claimed that title when the engine made its famous 126 mile per hour record run on July 3, 1938. In August 1938, the Milwaukee Road introduced the Class F7 streamlined 464 Hudsons with a total of six bills, and they held the pole to Hiawatha trains alongside the Class A Atlantics. These larger streamlined Hiawatha locomotives also became major contenders for the fastest steam locomotives ever built, as these engines were capable of traveling up to more than 100 miles per hour on a daily basis. In fact, one of the F7 Hudsons was even recorded to reach up to 125 miles per hour, just barely beneath Mallet's famous 126 mile per hour speed record, but did make them the fastest steam locomotives in the United States. Unfortunately, however, their speed and the records they once held wouldn't be enough to save them in the end. Both the Class A Atlantics and F7 Hudsons were retired from service between September 1945 and November 1951 as diesels began to take over the Hiawatha services, then later cut up for scrap. Personally, I would have liked it if at least one of these Hiawatha streamliners managed to make it into preservation. In fact, I would like it if someone ever decides to have a new build or replica of one of these streamlined speedsters built someday in future. In my opinion, I feel like there aren't that many preserved streamlined steam locomotives in the US today, and those that have survived can usually be found on stag display, either in museums or outdoor parks. In fact, there are only two surviving streamlined steam locomotives that are currently operational, those being Norfolk and Western Class J number 611, now officially named the Spirit of Roanoke, and Southern Pacific Class GS4 Daylight number 4449. Now, I am glad that we still have some streamlined steam locomotives still around today, and that the 4449 and 611 are currently running today, especially the 4449. It's just that there are still quite a few iconic streamlined steam locomotives in US railroad history that weren't quite lucky enough to survive that you'd feel at least one of them should have been preserved. Plus, with the advent of new built steam nowadays, it is possible to bring one or more of these extinct streamlined steamers back to life once again someday in the future. Then again, technically a new build of another class of American streamlined steam locomotives is currently being built. As for what that engine is, that's also on this list, so we'll get to that later. Number 14. The London and Northeastern Railway Class V4s To me, the V4s are one of the more unique classes of steam locomotives built for the LNDR, as they were the final class to be designed by Sir Nigel Gresley before his death on April 5, 1941. They were a class of mixed-traffic 262 Prairie-type steam locomotives built in 1941 at the LNDR's main works at Doncaster. However, only two of these engines were ever built, one numbered 3401 and the other 3402. The first one to be built, number 3401, was given the name Bantam Cock, but the second, and final, number 3402, was never given an official name, but was unofficially called Bantam Hen. The V4s were designed and built with many similarities to that of Gresley's earlier Class V2 Prairies, However, the V4s were built as a more lightweight alternative to the V2s, as the latter engines were pretty limited in terms of rod availability. When the V4s first entered service, being placed on trial on the Great Eastern Mainline, they were given pretty good feedback by different engine crews, reporting them to have more power and better riding qualities than Gresley's earlier Class B17 10-wheelers, which I talked about earlier. Many anticipated for more of the V4s to be produced, However, this never came to be after Gresley's unfortunate death and Edward Thompson took over as chief mechanical engineer for the LNER. Instead, Thompson decided to adopt his B1 class 10 wheelers as the LNER's standard mixed traffic engines. The two only V4s were then sent up to Scotland, where they saw service on the West Highland line. However, their 262 Prairie type wheel arrangement wasn't best suited to the steep grades on that line. In 1946, both engines were renumbered 1700 and 1701 as part of Thompson's renumbering scheme, 
Then two years later in 1948, were renumbered again to 61700 and 61701 after the LNER merged with the rest of the Big Four to become British Railways. The two final Gresley engines continued in service for BR over the next nine years until 1957 when their boilers became due for renewal. By then, British Railways simply just had them both withdrawn from service and scrapped, and the two only engines of Gresley's final class were no more. But this won't be the case for two months longer. Back in October 2016, the A1 Steam Locomotive Trust, the same group that built the new LNER Peppercorn Class A1 Pacific No. 60163 Tornado, announced that they planned to build what could have been the next Gresley Class V4 No. 3403 possibly to be named Bantam Chick. They planned to start the new build V4 project after they had completed construction of another new build of another class of extinct Gresley locomotives. As for what that other Gresley locomotive is? Well, that too was on this list, so you'll need to wait just a little bit longer. Number 13. The Norfolk and Western Y6Bs. The Norfolk and Western Railroad is best known for being the final railroad in the United States to keep steam in regular service, finally giving up steam in favor of diesel power in 1960. It was also best known for manufacturing its own steam engines at their main shops in Roanoke, Virginia. From 1884 to 1953, the Roanoke shops had produced almost 150 steam engines, all for the NW. Three of the most famous locomotive classes they built are the Class J Streamlined 484 Northerns, the Class A Simple Articulated 2664s, and the Class Y Malay Compound Articulated 2882s. Out of all three of these classes of Roanoke built locomotives, the NW continued to refine the Y class over the following years, resulting in 12 different subclasses, until their final result were the Y6Bs, with 30 engines built between 1948 and 1952, number 2171 to 2200. Now, before I get started with this class, I'm sure some of you will mention Norfolk and Western number 2156, owned by the Museum of Transportation in St. Louis, Missouri, as well as number 2050 at the Illinois Railway Museum in Union, Illinois. Just to make it clear, neither of these two engines is a Y6B, 2050 is a Y3A, and 2156 is a Y6A. The Y6Bs were longer, heavier, had larger fireboxes, and a greater attractive effort than the Y6As. In fact, the Y6Bs had just about as much horsepower as the Union Pacific Railroad's 4884 Big Boys. Like many other large Norfolk and Western articulated locomotives, the Y6Bs mostly found themselves on many of the railroad's long heavy coal drags, as well as many heavy freight trains all over the NW system. However, as the Norfolk and Western finally gave up steam for diesel power in the late 50s and early 60s, nearly all the Y6Bs were retired and caught up for scrap, but one almost did make it into preservation. On July 11, 1959, Y6B number 2174, along with Class A number 1240, was chosen to pull the Norfolk and Western's farewell to steam excursion on a round trip between Roanoke, Virginia and Jaeger, West Virginia, as the days of steam came to a close on the NW. Number 1240 headed the train first out of Roanoke and pulled it as far as Bluefield, where the 2174 took over the train the rest of the way to Jaeger. In fact, number 2174 was even used for the only photo run by of the whole excursion, over a trestle bridge near Aminate, Virginia. Sometime after the excursion, number 2174 was sold to a scrapyard in Roanoke, where she stayed until 1976. The Roanoke chapter of the National Railway Historical Society did try to make an attempt to rescue number 2174 from the scrapyard and have her preserved for future generations. Unfortunately, the head of the fundraising project that purchased the engine from the scrapyard had passed away before they could meet the deadline. To make matters even worse, the scrapyard where 2174 sat fell under ownership of a British firm, which had completely no interest in preserving the large American steam locomotives that sat there. So sadly, the last remaining Y6B was cut up. 
It is a shame that a Y6B managed to slip away before anyone had a chance to preserve it, but at least we still have Y3A number 2050 and Y6A number 2156 around to help complete the link in the chain of Roanoke's Big Three.